Welcome to CSC Guru. In this session, we will discuss a problem based on FCFR scheduling with arrival time. The problem is, consider the following set of process with arrival time and CPU burst time given in milliseconds. So there are five process with the burst time and arrival time are given. So we have to solve the problem based on FCFR scheduling algorithm. FCFR scheduling is nothing but first to come, first to served scheduling algorithm. In this scheduling, the process which enters into the job queue first, that process will be executed with the CPU first. And here if you are considering, the arrival time of each process is given. And based on this arrival time, the process will be sequentially placed in the job queue. In the same job queue order only, the process will be assigned to the CPU for execution. And one more thing, in FCFR scheduling, it is a non-preemptive scheduling algorithm. That is, once the process is assigned to the CPU for execution, it will not leave the CPU for any reason. It will complete its execution and then only the process will leave the CPU. That is the non-preemptive scheduling and FCFR is a non-preemptive scheduling algorithm. Here, if you are considering, there are five process and here, the burst time and arrival time are given in the problem itself. We need to find the completion time, turnaround time and the waiting time. Burst time is nothing but the total execution time of each process with the CPU. The arrival time is nothing but the time when the process arrives into the job queue. And completion time is nothing but the time when the process completes its execution with the CPU. This completion time we can easily find with the help of this gang chart. The turnaround time is nothing but the time interval between when the process enters into the job queue and when the process completes its execution with the CPU. And waiting time is nothing but the total waiting time of each process in the job queue before it is assigned to the CPU for execution. And after finding the turnaround time and waiting time, we are going to find the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. Here, if you are considering the process P1, burst time is 6 milliseconds. The process has arrived into the ready queue at the time 2 milliseconds. And process P2 with the burst time 2 and arrival time 5. Process P3 with the burst time 8 and arrival time 1. Process P4 with the burst time 3 and arrival time is 0 milliseconds. Process P5 with the burst time 4 and arrival time 4 milliseconds. So here if you are considering this problem, we are going to solve based on FCFR scheduling algorithm. And here if you are considering for all the process, arrival time has given. So based on the arrival time, which process has entered into the ready queue first, that will be assigned to the CPU first. So if you are considering here, the process P4 has arrived into the ready queue at 0 milliseconds. So at the time of 0 milliseconds, this is the only process in the ready queue. So to solve any scheduling algorithm, first we have to construct the gang shot. The gang shot shows the starting time and the completion time of each process clearly. So if you are considering here, at the time of 0 millisecond, the process P4 is the first process enters into the ready queue. So process P4 will be assigned to the CPU for execution first. And the CPU time starts with the 0 milliseconds. First process is P4 is assigned to the CPU for execution. And the burst time of process P4 is 3 milliseconds. So totally 3 milliseconds of CPU time will be taken by process P4 to complete its execution. Next based on the arrival time, process P3 has entered into the ready queue next at the time 1 millisecond. So the next process is assigned to the CPU is P3 with the burst time 8. Already 3 milliseconds is over plus 8. It is 11 milliseconds and next based on the arrival time process p1 enters into the ready queue at 2 millisecond with the burst time 6 so p1 is the next process and the burst time is 6 milliseconds 11 plus 6 it is 17 and next process is p5 at the time 4 milliseconds 
and burst time of process P5 is 4. So 17 plus 4 it is 21. And the next process is P2 at the time 5 milliseconds. P2 at the time 5 milliseconds with burst time 2. So 21 plus 2 it is 23. So if you are considering this gang shot for every process, we can easily identify the starting time and the completion time or ending time of each process. So for every process, the left side value shows the starting time of execution with the CPU and the right side value shows the ending time of execution with the CPU for each process. So process P4 starting time is 0 and ending time that is the completion time is 3. And for process P3 starting time is 3 and the completion time is 11. And for process P1 starting time is 11, completion time is 17. Process P5 starting time is 17 and completion time is 21. And for process P2 starting time is 21 and the completion time is 23. So based on this Gantt chart, we can able to identify the completion time easily. So for process P1, the completion time is nothing but 17 milliseconds. And for process P2, the completion time is 23. And for process P3, completion time is 11. Process P4, completion time is 3. And for process P5, the completion time is 21. Next, we need to identify the turnaround time. The turnaround time is nothing but the time when it enters into the ready queue and when it completes its execution. This time interval is nothing but the turnaround time. So we can able to calculate the turnaround time based on the formula. Turnaround time is equal to the completion time of each process minus the arrival time of each process. So the completion time of process P1 is 17 and arrival time is 2. So 17 minus 2 it is 15. Next 23 minus 5 it is 18. 11 minus 1 10 and 3 minus 0 it is 3. 21 minus 4 it is 17. Next, we need to identify the waiting time of each process. So, the waiting time is nothing but once the process enters into the ready queue, how long each process waits in the ready queue until it is assigned to the CPU for execution. The time interval is nothing but the waiting time. And here, we can able to calculate the waiting time with the formula turnaround time minus burst time. The turnaround time is nothing but the time when it enters into the ready queue and when it completes its execution. That time interval and burst time is nothing but the total time it executes with the CPU. So waiting time is nothing but turnaround time minus burst time. So here if you are considering the turnaround time is 15. So for process P1 turnaround time is 15 and burst time is 6. So here 15 minus 6 it is 9 and for process P2 18 minus 2, it is 16. And for process P3, 10 minus 8, it is 2. And for process P4, 3 minus 3, that is 0. That is, this is the first process enters into the ready queue without any waiting time. Immediately, it is, it is assigned to the CPU for execution. So, the waiting time of process P4 is 0 milliseconds. And for process P5, 17 minus 4, it is 13. So, if you are considering, this is the waiting time of each process. Next, we need to find the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. So, average turnaround time is nothing but the turnaround time of each process. That is, adding the turnaround time of each process divided by the number of process. So, here the number of process is 5. So here if you are considering it as 63 divided by 5, that is 12.6 milliseconds. So the average turnaround time is 12.6 and the average waiting time is nothing but add the waiting time of each process divided by number of process. 
so that is nothing but 40 divided by 5 it is 8 milliseconds so this is the average turnaround time and the average waiting time so now we have discussed the fcfs scheduling algorithm based on arrival time suppose if the arrival time is not given in the problem the completion time and the turnaround time will be same because the arrival time of each process will be zero if it is not given we have to consider the arrival time as zero milliseconds so in that case the completion time and the tur turnaround time will be same thank you for watching this video